board meeting here. <laughs> for the regular board meeting for September 17, 2018, the Board of Park Commissioners of the Lake Park, Park District, Lake County, Illinois. Roll call, please. Commissioner Earhart. Here. Commissioner Gordon. Absent with prior notice. Commissioner McKendry. Here. Commissioner Mossbarger. Here. Commissioner Patera. Here. Commissioner Wallace. Here. President Douglas. Here. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the agenda? So, second. Roll call, please. Uh, Commissioner Earhart? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Mossbarger? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. President Douglas? Okay, uh, before we move in on to uh, statement of visitors, um, I'd like to make a, a quick statement. Um, Last week, uh, two misinformation events occurred related to the Lake Bluff Park District Golf Course. The first event was an interview by Kim Gordon of WGN Radio. Before the interview began, she inaccurately stated, quote, after 50 years, the Park District wants to close the golf course, end quote. This statement is simply not true. The Park Board has never made such a statement. The second event occurred fr on last Friday. A letter to the editor published in the Lake Forest Leader inaccurately stating the Park District is planning to sell the Lake Park Golf Club. The Park District has not considered the sale of the golf course at all. This simply is not true. And I'd like to remind everybody, the public, that as you may recall, after three public meetings last February and March in the gymnasium, the board listened to all of the comments from the community, and from those meetings, the board outlined four initiatives. The first one was to reassess the green fee structure, pricing structure uh, for the golf course. This was completed in April. The second initiative was to request the village, PCZBA, which is the Planning Commission Zoning Board of Appeals, to rezone all park district land to recreational, institutional, and open space zoning to protect all park district land and to preserve open space. The third item was to issue a RFP to lease the golf course, which the board is currently evaluating the responses. And the fourth was to fundraising to offset golf capital and operating expenses which is well underway due to the efforts of the Golf Association. It has been the board's objective to find a solution to keep the golf course operating without significant subsidized dollars from the taxpayer. We continue to communicate with all of our residents and to be transparent as possible through this process. We anticipate communicating directly for the golf course and regarding the golf course by the end of October. So that's my statement. I just I wanted to put that on the record, the misinformation that's been occurring. So we can now move on to uh, the statement of visitors, and this is for non-agenda items. Um, so Colette's going to give an update on the activities of the association, but she's going to wait and do that during my committee time instead of Okay, that's fine. That, that's consistent. So any other uh, non-agenda items? None. We'll move on to verbal communications. So the first one is staff report. None, none for me? Oh. Sure. Uh, first, I'd like to report that uh, this past weekend we held a uh, beach cleanup. Um, it was a, a national day for all beaches along the Great Lakes. We had a little over 80 people that were in attendance. I just want to thank the residents that came out to help clean the beach along with the Cub Scouts. And uh, we actually had uh, quite a few other residents that showed up to help, or not non-residents that, that showed up to help clean up. We had uh, a couple from Mundelein, and we had a couple from Libertyville, as long, along with um, a couple other people from Lake Forest that came out and helped pick up garbage. And uh, I'm glad to say there wasn't actually a lot to pick up. Um, our residents do a great job uh, keeping our beaches clean. And, um, Happy to report that. I'd like to introduce uh, Rosie, uh, Rosie Alaporta. She is our Recreation Services Manager. She started in January, and uh, she is going to give a quick report on uh, 
an announcement about Trunk or Treat and a movie. Sure. Yeah, so this year we're doing Trunk or Treat October 19th, Friday. Um, trunk or Treat, uh, the event, you can decorate your trunks and um, enter to win a prize for the best looking trunk. Um, and the kids can trick or treat. And then following Trunk or Treat, we're going to have movie in the park at Blair Park. Um, we are hoping to show the movie Hotel Transylvania 3, which will be very fitting with the Halloween themes. Um, so we're hoping combining those two events into one will bring a lot of families and the community together to have a fun kind of Halloween themed night. So that's what we got going on. Hey, also, uh, I think everybody knows Dana. Dana Hansen is our director for preschool and early childhood. Uh, do you have a couple of things that you I do. Think? I'd like to tell you about two things. We are about to host our fourth annual family bonfire night at Mom and Park, where we host all of the families from preschool and alumni and family and friends. Everyone's invited. Uh, that families establish a sense of community that night. And it's a really <coughs> fun time making food and have beer and wine from Prairie Espresso. Uh, we have a face painter. It's just a great, we actually do have a bonfire planned this year because it's going to be cold enough. Usually we have a fake fire. So, and also we are planning for our first annual Mom's Night Out. Uh, the moms will enjoy a night out with wine at Prairie Espresso and we plan on purchasing catering food for the evening. So they buy their Prairie Espresso wine or whatever. We will like, we'll buy the food. So it'll be a lovely night with the bonfire as well. And that's in October. Huh? Uh, I've got two items. One is an update on the flooding and reseeding of the golf course. Um, over the Labor Day weekend, we got about five inches of rain, which stuck around for quite some time, about five days. We lost some grass. It wasn't uh, as bad as the last flooding last year. It was probably 80% of that which is still pretty significant. It's probably two acres of uh, fairway grass that we've lost. We're in the process of reseeding it right now. We're probably 50% done with the seeding. Um, hopefully we'll finish up this week if the weather uh, treats us well, and we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, hopefully we get good germination in about seven days. Um, the second item is the Knollwood Walking Path paving project it is underway. It started today. Um, the pavers were working tonight, probably at 5 o'clock when I drove by, and uh, they should be done by late tomorrow. So, at, at least with the paving portion. There's still some landscaping around the edges to do after that, but uh, <coughs> should be able to get a pretty good idea of what it looks like. So just one item to highlight from the report is just that the golf course will be hosting uh, an inaugural golf tober fest on Saturday, October 13th. So this will be a combination of a two-person scramble, three club event at 10 o'clock in the morning, and then we're gonna do a beer tasting uh, and kind of family festival in the tent afterwards at two o'clock that will be open to residents and non-residents, and that will be complimentary admission on the non-golf portion. Um, I just wanted to highlight that to the board. met uh, end of September, um, big topic was the uh, lights and the, the paddle court issue that was 
uh, put back to our committee. So later on, um, we'll be talking about that, and we've got to make a nice compromise there. So uh, also did a, a bit, kind of started to do a deep dive into the racket sport financials. Um, Eric and uh, Ed put together a first pass at that. There were uh, missing some information that they're going to follow up on, and, and we hope to get together um, maybe beginning of October to um, kind of make another pass at that. And what we're trying to do is put it in the same format that we have golf and that we have fitness first to make it easily understandable, um, and then we'll kind of delve into strategy and, and a go-forward plan for uh, the racket scores. Great. Yeah, and then... Um, Colette was going to give an update, I think, on activities, but I'm sure uh, the event on the, whatever the day is, 12, 13? 13. 13. So for the fundraising update portion, there's actually two parts that the Friends of Lakewood Parks are, are looking at right now. So one is the total, not including the 50th anniversary events, and then they have a meeting next Monday where they're going to reconcile all the 50th anniversary events, um, fundraising amounts, and have them aggregately there. They want to have a meeting first to reconcile and check that box. So as of last Tuesday, the fundraised amount without the golf event was $62,399.18. Um, the 50th anniversary event is um, from both the park district's um, spreadsheet and hopefully it looks like it will equal out about the same from the friends of around $50,000. So we should be somewhere around 11, you know, 1,000, or 111,000, you know, 112,000. Yeah. Um, so some of the other things that we're doing, we launched a crowdfunding site today. Um, also very exciting. So the Kleenex of, of crowdfunding is uh, GoFundMe. We're not using GoFundMe. They have really high fees, um, so we're using another organization that allows you to do a lot more with fewer fees, like set up teams to fundraise. The purpose of that is really to get beyond our borders and raise awareness because we've, we've used a lot of the same people over and over in our community, but there's other people who want, you know, local golf and public golf to stay around and, and really support what we're doing here. So to get a little bit beyond you know, our borders. We're begging our families. <laughs> well, and then there's some people who've been meaning to give, and it slips our minds. We all get busy, so it's another opportunity there. Um, that is through PayPal, how you can pay. I'm going to talk with friends of on Monday if we can add a credit card option, but, you know, there's some things that you have to do behind the scenes for that, so working together with that. Um, I met with the Lake Forest High School golf coach um, about fundraising, and just to let you all know, kind of the high school is um, their stance is that they don't want to raise money beyond their own needs as um, you know a high school but they are willing to send this crowdfunding site to the parents if the parents would like to reach out um, we are working with the park district on the golf October event on the 13th so the main purpose of that is not a big fundraising but more of a community event um, so we are going to have a food truck there that will raise a little bit of money and then working on some other creative things that people that if they want to give can give. Is there a main sponsor for that? There, well, just our, our food truck. Yeah. Who is? Our food truck is uh, Marty's Eats. There you go. Thanks Something you know, fun. If you don't be there, but I can highly recommend it. Okay. <laughs> Asian. Asian Fusion. Asian Ooh. Fusion. Ooh. Sounds good. So, yeah. See, now you're excited, yeah, right? Excited. Yeah. <laughs> So we're working on a few other things behind the scenes, but until those are more solidified, I don't really want to give anything away. Um, so that's more on the donation side. On the pledges side, um, we have very few, but we kind of anticipated that was going to happen until October, but we're getting a little bit forward. What I will say is when we've talked to some people, there on the pledge side, there's a lot less you know, wanting to do that with not knowing what's going on with the golf course. So, um, Commissioner Douglas, or President Douglas, your, your in info at the beginning is very helpful because people are wondering, and I, as you can see, in absence of information, people insert whatever they want to. So, what would be very helpful for that is somehow getting more information out like that, like, 
um, when you're planning on giving an update about when you can give information on the RFP, um, when you're planning on making another decision. Um, another thing is um, what are you going to do long term if this is successful. So people are wondering some of these things which I think will help the pledge drive. Um, and then on top of that, if we can give some more, give some more information out if there's an opportunity to become a member early before next year or do some creative things that way, we can start the year off right. But until we get that information, and I'm sure you guys are also waiting to get that information, it's really hard to do that next part. So we can hopefully work in partnership there, even if it's like a Q&A with myself or someone else and, and, and the Facilities and Programs Committee, just to, where are we at? What do you think about fundraising so far? So I think it's more important to get good, solid information on what we have now than an absence of information. Um, yeah, so that's that's most of what's going on with us. Is there anything else? Yeah, that's our update. That's great. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Any more from your committee? No. no. Okay. Um, there's nothing to report on Tri-Board. I haven't heard anything from that one. So, um, Friends of the Parks. As Colette mentioned, they're scheduled for Monday. I think Colette will be there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, Jim and I won't be, but they're ready to go. So, they'll try it out. Okay. Um, commissioner comments at all? Anything else to add? No, but thank you for addressing those two issues. We didn't have any that was, that was, we're not selling those folks. No. So thank you for addressing that right away. But um, try to emphasize that, you know, I think we've worked hard the last couple of years to really maintain a very open, transparent process here. And we're doing our best with you know, these more delicate issues that we're dealing with right now. So um, please show a little more patience. And as I said, end of October, we should uh, know really where we're going. So um, I have nothing else to report um, as a president. So I guess we can move on to approval of meeting minutes. And so so I get a motion to approve the minutes of, of August 13th, 2018 for the special board meeting. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Earhart. Yes. Commissioner McHenry. Yes. Commissioner Mossbarger. Yes. Commissioner Patera. Yes. Commissioner Wallace. Yes. President Douglas. Yes. And we have a motion to approve the minutes from the August 20th, 2018 regular board meeting. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Earhart. Abstain. Commissioner McKendry. Yes. Commissioner Mossbarger. Yes. Commissioner Patera. Yes. Commissioner Wallace. Yes. President Douglas. Yes. Okay, moving on to the consent agenda. Um, may I have a motion to accept the September 4th and 17th, 2018 pay list? So, second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Earhart? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Mossbarger? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. President Douglas? Yes. And now, may I have a motion to approve the September 4th and 17th, 2018 pay So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Earhart? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Mossbarger? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. President Douglas? Yes. Okay, moving on to finance. Uh, first item, 2018 August and year to date financials. Page 32, I'm just going to give a quick synopsis and then I'm going to ask uh, Ed and Jim to, to give uh, what they anticipate projections for the end of the year. So the real estate tax line item, we're still off balance a little bit uh, from the fact is we received a lot of taxes up front at the beginning of the year related to the, the federal law. So we believe for the uh, September or the October board meeting that that will be all caught up and we'll be able to evaluate the financials a little bit easier. So right now we, we received more taxes up front. So it looks as though financials at times may be a little bit better, but that will all catch up. They'll all smooth out, I guess, at, at, uh, for the next uh, report. 
So it's just, uh, it's kind of thrown us off a little bit in terms of pulling back what we received. So, uh, so we're, we're going to be normalized. Um, we do have some, some reductions and anticipate in Social Security and pension costs due to staff vacancies, so we see that coming down the road in projections. They are um, not ready to give a, an outlook on our projections end of the year because we're still waiting for a few months here. But there are some very positive projections, and then there's some that, uh, uh, you know, that we need to take a look at, and then Jim and Ed can talk about that. But uh, we're getting closer. I think by the next board report, we should be able to have a good feel for where we're at at the end of the year. So, uh, but I'll let Jim and Ed go through. There's obviously some, there, there really are some good areas that we feel good about. So we all pay our taxes in September. When does the park district get its share of those from the county? Yeah, most of it, it just comes in stages, but the most of it will probably be in the September. It comes in various installments. So hopefully by the end of September, the issue of the early payment. The early payment split. will get caught up. So um, I right. feel pretty good about that. So we're, we're right on target, actually, to, to what we left. So Jim, why don't you go sure. first? In that so I'll just uh, talk to uh, talk about the recreation program side of things. That would be preschool, that would be enrichments, youth athletics, uh, after school care, camps, special events, uh, and dance. So th those would be th that area. Um, within those areas, uh, we have some that are down, and then we have some that are uh, actually, uh, good news, really up. Uh, the areas that uh, we feel probably are going to be down, and we'll go through that when we go through the quarterly reports, would be after school care program uh, is going to be down from previous years. Um, it's not going to be budget. And then uh, the other area that uh, is close is dance. It's, it's like almost right there in budget. Um, but overall, preschool, enrichments, and camps together collectively will help the rec program area as a group uh, exceed net budgeted by about $30,000. So uh, overall collectively, we're, we're looking at $30,000 part of the budget. Great. So I'll walk through the three uh, kind of key departments. So starting with the fitness center, uh, right now projections are showing that we'll finish the year about $19,000 favorable to budget. Um, revenue is going to come in right around budget. Right now the projections are about $500 over budget, better than budget. Um, and that does include the strategy plan. So year one of the strategy plan, we increase the, the revenue budget um, in order to reflect that, that year one growth. So right in line with what we kind of have projected for that three-year strategy plan, um, about a $20,000 uh, net positive at the end of the day for the fitness center. With regards to racket sports, uh, estimated to come in about $12,000 favorable to budget. Again, uh, revenues generally in line uh, with where budget is, and then there's some expense savings, uh, some instructor expense savings that's a little lower than what we anticipated. Um, so we, that's a strong area. The last one, uh, the largest one is golf. Overall, uh, right now projections are showing that we will finish the year $70,000 unfavorable to budget. Uh, the vast majority of all of that is because of a miss to revenue. We're going to miss revenues by $118,000 this year. Uh, it's down 7% from last year. Uh, we do have some expense savings, so we've got about $23,000 worth of expense savings from Billy Casper Golf on their operations their side of things, and then the park district has about $25,000 worth of savings to budget uh, to get back to that $70,000 unfavorable area. Uh, yeah. um, we'll continue to work through projections and, uh, and see where we're at on the administrative side, so we will still go through. And, so not ready to get a number yet until we, until we really come through where we're at. So that's why they're projections. I know. And it's weather related? Yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, well, which well, regards to golf weather well, related. It's, We're it's, down more, it's more than weather, guys. Know, Come on. But it's, it's more than weather. It is? So. What is it? What is it? Yeah. We've been down all year. We've been down since day one. Really? So, yeah. That's kind of, I mean, just the when I've gone out there, I've got a ton of people out there, way more golf than the past few years. <laughs> The, the, the facts that we're, we're down on rounds to budget and we're down on rounds to last year. Is it budget? We're down on memberships. Is the budget well, the same as last year? Did you expect more money this year? We're really not doing a QA here. I know, but, it's, it's, um, but Ed, can you uh, clarify a little bit on just some of the categories within the golf operations? Sure. Mm -hmm. So, year to date, round totals, and this is as of Sunday. Um, round totals year to date, we've done 18,806 rounds. We budgeted to do 22,938 rounds. So that's about, that is pretty much exactly 19% short of budget and over, over 4,000 rounds short of budget. Compared to last year, last year we did uh, year to date 21,031 rounds. So we're more than 10% less than our total number of rounds last year. I will say, um, to Bob's point, uh, we definitely, we've had two significant weather events this year, but um, week over where we have essentially even weeks where favorable weather conditions, for the most part, we've underperformed last year, uh, week after week. Um, you know, this last week was better than the week before, but, but for the most part, we've, we've, we have underperformed last year's numbers when we've had favorable conditions. Thank you. That just the number here that helps really yep. bring some obje objectivity to it. So, um, okay. Uh, any other comments at all with uh, any of the uh, financials? No. Um, I guess we should have a motion to accept the financials that are presented. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Earhart? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Mossberger? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. President Douglas? Yes. Okay, moving on to purchase cards ratification. Yep, so the only difference uh, from last year <coughs> was uh, the batting cage, and I think we talked about that last month where we had a, uh, uh, due to the, the Leather came down months ago, and yeah, so we won't be getting reimbursed for this with the baseball association. Right. So, so that is a, a significant part of the yeah. That, that is the main. That's the only reason. Right. Okay. Um, any questions, though? No. Can I get a motion to uh, ratify the? Purchase card payment of $56,977.97. So moved. Second. Can I roll call, please? Commissioner Earhart? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Mossberger? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. President Douglas? Yes. Okay, moving on to the whole business. 2018 quarterly participation and membership report.
memberships and what's different this year with the pool of memberships uh, we did have a slight um, decline uh, we really started off well the, in the pool season actually that first weekend in May we had quite a few memberships that came in and we were running uh, close to about $20,000 ahead and then the next two weeks which are our biggest weeks for mem pool memberships because that's when schools just about to get out People are buying their memberships. We ended up with all that cold weather and, uh, and uh, rain that came in. I think that probably had a lot to do with it. There was about, missed about $8,000 worth um, of memberships compared to last year. So we figured the two main areas was a family of uh, three, I think it was family of, family of three and family of four and family of five. So those gotta be our targets for next year. We're already strategizing as, uh, as a pool team uh, with my two pool managers on how are we gonna continue to grow with the pool? And how are we gonna bring in more memberships? So uh, we already sat down, we have quite a few things and we're gonna share that during the budget time. Some of it is uh, different pricing, um, but most of it is it's, you gotta attract more people to come into the pool. So that, that's gotta be our, it's not about necessarily the rates because we can always increase rates, but we wanna bring in more people at the top pool, we wanna bring more people into the main pool, and how do we do that? So uh, I'll be sharing that a little bit later with you guys uh, when we uh, discuss uh, the, the budgets. Um, second thing that we were gonna discuss, uh, and I talked about a little bit in the quarterly, or uh, at the board report, was ARC. Um, so after school recreation club has been consistent since even since I've been here. It has averaged 68, 67 kids per session. Uh, this past spring was the first time we saw a significant decline in after school recreation club. So we the decline was on average 10 to 11 kids less than last year or previous years. That's that's pretty significant. You know when you look at going from 68 kids to 57 kids. Um, and we've already started strategizing. Uh, Rosie, is, uh, she oversees the After School Recreation Club. Uh, they've already been doing different types of promotions. Maybe people aren't aware of it at the elementary school that we even offer this. So they set up a table this year uh, just because we knew that we were down from the spring. Uh, just when they had their open house, that way we could do promotions, let families know. Uh, we put it in a virtual backpack. We're just trying to ask the teachers to communicate to the students there at LDS. Um, the more we do of that, uh, I think we're going to see more families come back to after school recreation club. Um, I'm going to ask Dana to talk about a little bit about preschool participation. So for the last four years, we've maintained the same number of participants. Uh, it's actually our goal. We are uh, using the same ratio that DCFS uses and AC. We feel it's a very appropriate number so, and very safe for our children. My previous, the predecessor, my previous um, director had a, a few more in numbers. We've, I feel that what we have now is a much more appropriate number and uh, safer for our children. And I do know that families are very, very happy with our ratios and we have lines out the door trying to get into our preschool. This last school year, in January, when they registered, we had parents come at 5 in the morning to line up wow. and sign up, and um, it was incredible. So we have a wait list out the door still, and uh, we're very happy with our progress. And so if you wanted more than 112, you could easily increase that. We could. Yeah. We could. The reason we're not increasing, I mean, we're not... I think that more slots. 
I will tell you that the elementary school um, across the street established a new three-year-old program and they took a bunch of our students this summer. And so we took off our boxing gloves and we, we got a whole bunch of new students in and we stacked the tubes. And what we did was we had an extra teacher or our assistant that is a floater help out on those very heavy days. And then what we're seeing is our afternoon kindergarten is a little bit lower because now it's a full day over across the street. So really our goal would be to increase those numbers in the afternoon for afternoon kindergarten. And I know that will increase as it comes into winter time. Um, and that will be a very appropriate number for that particular class. Other than that, the other classrooms are very appropriately ratioed according to NACI standards. Uh, so we're going to talk about camps. I, I had two slides and we're trying to get it uh, restarting the computer. So uh, we have uh, what I call traditional camps. Traditional camps are your two-week session camps. Uh, that's where that's our bread and butter. That's where we have kids for two weeks, either for three days a week or five days a week. Uh, they're here from anywhere from eight o'clock in the morning all the way till about three o'clock or even longer than that if they uh, join our stay and play program. So uh, this is a, a key area. We always have to make sure if we're going to grow, this is the area that we need to grow. Um, we're always looking at different types of camps, but you've got to be careful offering way too many camps because then people shift and they'll, they'll shift from a three or five day camp and go to what I call a non-traditional camp. Non-traditional camp would be uh, like Kelly's camp. Um, so with the camps, uh, did you get it yet? No? <laughs> Keep going? All right. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Mini and Mighty Sprouts camp. That's our uh, preschool camps. Okay, so many had gone up a little bit. Um, we expected that. And Mighty Sprouts, uh, we enjoyed a really wonderful summer of pony rides for Western Week and Smarty Pants Balloon Guy for a Carnival Week. It was a very successful summer. It went down a little bit in numbers, um, not by much, by 15 participants. And it, we think it's due to all the wonderful options that parents have at our park district. So it's kind of a lateral shift. It's not that we went down in numbers, it's just we shifted. Want to talk about day camp? Yeah, and then for day camp, um, we had a lot of returning staff this summer and a returning camp manager, which was very helpful in planning our activities and offering new ideas each week um, in each session. Um, some of our field trips we had this summer, we went to Action Territory, um, Hidden Creek Aqua Park, Anaheim Park, um, Milwaukee Zoo, and Meadow Hill Aquatic Center in North Brook. And our numbers for the five-day day camp actually increased um, by 13, which is great. Um, that's more kids, more days. And then we had a slight de decrease in uh, the three-day option for day camp. It went down by about 36 participants. Um, that could be, hopefully, maybe some of those um, kids went to the five-day option or to a specialty camp. Um, and then with our athletic camp, we had a new camp manager this summer um, who helped with structuring our day-to-day -day programming, um, really offering the golf, tennis and paddle, and our sports and fitness aspects of athletic camp, and really um, kind of had smaller groups rotating throughout the day so that they could really focus on all of those activities. Um, and we also introduced archery this year with the athletic camp, so that was a big hit um, and something yeah. new and exciting that it brought to the table. Um, so our numbers increased by 51 for athletic camp. Wow, that's awesome. I was really hoping to show the slide, uh, but in the, you have it in the quarterly report. And an interesting thing, if you notice, three, uh, the three-day traditional day camp compared to Camp Kickahop. If you look at the numbers, they're almost identical in the reverse. So what we did was, and I started to see this trend happen, I started to, you know, Dana and I spoke, because Sheila Thompson, one of the preschool teachers, runs this camp. We started to try to identify the youth and actually to see if those youth attended the three-day camp, and actually they did. So what was a good news story with this is they came, from, they went from a three-day camp and said, you know what? We want five days. So they came over to Camp Kickahow for five days a week. We still have some things to work out with that because what the, 
the difficult thing was with this camp, there was no after, or after camp care. There was an hour gap. So we, we couldn't strategize on that for the summer. We didn't want to try to put something together that wouldn't be all that great. He means an hour gap between the end of that camp and the end of the next round of camps, which ended at three. Uh, they chose either to get picked up or you know they ended up with uh, a nanny that maybe came over with them and hung out at the pool. Um, We're not sure. ideas yeah. on how to to care for these kids or perhaps get make the camp longer. Um, but we also can walk them over, or we actually a lot would like to be able to purchase a bus <laughs> to be able to transport okay. those kids. That's I know a pipe dream, but that's something we'd like to eventually get. Yeah. So that was, a, that was a good news story that you saw the shift. I mean, you want to see these shifts. You want people to move from, from coming here longer versus being here a shorter period of time. Um, I also, we had a, a real major decrease with the Adventure Teen Traveler Camp. Not so much on the Teen Traveler side, that's the bicycle camp. The Adventure Camp is where uh, they have to get transportation and they might go to a climbing wall or they might go kayaking or Independence Grove. Um, the history with this camp is that it's, it's always been up and down. Um, we never cancel the camp. We don't want to ever cancel any type of camp, and we ran some low numbers, and we made sure that uh, we broke even with the camp. But the key is for the future for us for this, this camp uh, is that we want to turn it into um, quite a bit of a just all teen traveler because we get so many people that are requesting it, and they want 10 days. They don't want Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and it's the older kids. So for us, it's important. We think we can even, uh, right now we, we take in about 15, we think we can take in 25. I can get more counselors to actually run this program if we do it with this, if we do it at a 10-day camp. So um, that's the traditional two-week session camps. The non-traditional camps, so it might be like Kelly's camp, which is a one-day gymnastics camp, uh, it could be Camp Crazy Days where we don't really control Camp Crazy Days. That's uh, when the Kaleidoscope program or the summer uh, school program, those kids come to us after they finish school. And the school pays for part of these kids to come to Camp Crazy Days. We don't really have control over those numbers. Those numbers are what they are. Uh, we don't get anybody coming from not going to that uh, summer school program coming into this program. That, that would be our priority. So Kelly's camp uh, really had a significant decline and a big part of it wasn't because of the instructor or the program. Well, it was because of a little bit of the instructor. Yeah. Kelly was in a uh, car accident in the beginning of summer, which uh, created, uh, since she's a, a specialty instructor, it, it created an issue where she couldn't spot. So we had to limit the, that, those classes. So that, that's why that one was declined. Um, and actually, now we have two gymnastic instructors. So uh, Holly Curtis, if you are familiar with her, she is one of our dance instructors. Uh, she uh, went to Northwestern University, and she was uh, a cheerleader there, and she was in the gymnastics program. All along, these years, I, I didn't know this, you know, and then she's talking to me about it, and she's super excited. She's taken over about, uh, about 25% of the gymnastic classes, and she's extending gymnastics in the fall for Saturdays, which is terrific, because that was always difficult to get Kelly to run Saturday uh, programs. Now Holly's gonna, she's gonna run three to four uh, programs on a Saturday. So this is great, this is, you know, it, this is uh, a good find, and, and Kelly's feeling better, and she's, you know, ready to, to be doing all of her uh, camps again, and she'll be offering that this winter. That's awesome news. Yeah. Because parents are familiar with Holly because of the dance program and they love her. They love her. So it's such a great, it's it's so such great. great transition and yeah. I'm so excited to hear about that. We you can ask your question. Who, sure. What's the age group for a teen traveler? So a teen traveler is 11 years of age and up. That is an age group. I have so many families asking me, like, what, do you, what should I do with my kids? So I think you definitely could go more than 25. That program is getting such a great reputation for kids that are involved. And um, I don't mean to interrupt, but I do want to say, like, if we could clone Sheila Thompson, we would have 500 kids in that program. Because I ran into a lot of parents 
that couldn't do the program because they only maybe could get one child in. Yeah. And that time issue, I agree, if you could work that out. Mm -hmm. And some other feedback I received is parents want to do a lot of these classes, like they like that you have like a little dance class or gymnastics, but still the timing has to be worked out because parents want to go from one to the next. And some of them, the one, the one thing I heard the most this summer from young parents was, well not young parents, but parents of young children, is that their kids want to do a lot of the things that are at the same exact time. So they were looking for something like there was like so much in the morning, but then they wanted something in the afternoon. So if you, and I think it's getting better, but I still think it could be still going. Tomorrow we plan on surveying the entire summer program participants, and we will. I will actually have a questionnaire geared towards that. Okay. See but you your counselors this year, I thought they were energetic and fun. I thought the staffing was awesome. I got tons of great feedback. And you're doing an awesome job in preschool. I know you are. We only had more rooms. <laughs> so it's interesting because this year for staffing, uh, both at the pool, the beach, and camps were all young staff. Most of them were really green. I mean, first time, you know, and it, 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 was, uh, it was definitely uh, an eye opener to have all those areas with brand new staff. Uh, it actually helped a little bit with the budget, you know, and um, the, one, the last slide I had for uh, all the camps was actually our revenue. So uh, just to kind of give you an idea on revenue, in 2013, our revenue uh, was like around two hundred sixty-four thousand dollars, and our revenue. This is gross revenue. Our gross revenue this year is three forty-one. So since twenty thirteen, we've gone from two hundred sixty-four thousand dollars to three hundred forty-one thousand dollars. And, and so our, you know, and, and it's about obviously you want to get more participation because more participation you're going to grow with those numbers. Now we did have some savings on the expense side of things due to some of the um, staffing. But we also were smarter about how we were staffing. We talked to our managers, and they're like, I don't need this. We, we would always hire, over hire sometimes. So they analyzed our staffing and, and helped us and strategized and said, I only need this much and for this. And so that was definitely a, a big help. The other major difference between 2013 and now is that we changed the way we were doing camps. Before, we were offer, offering a one-week pre-camp and a one-week post-camp. And we only took in like 40 kids for either one of those two camps. Well, when the school decided to do their construction, those board members, if you remember, I reported that we ended up extending the camp season because they needed something to do. So we saw that these kids wanted to do all this stuff. And so what we did was then we moved uh, the next two, last two years, we added an extra week of camp. And obviously that helps, and the families wanted it, and it showed. So um, that was really the last slide we were going to show. We were going to show you a video, but we'll save it for the budget. Um, when we, we had a video, we had a camp manager that actually made a promo video for Teen Traveler, our Teen Traveler uh, manager. He did an outstanding job. It's really professional. Awesome. Yeah, it's just it's fantastic. And so that's the kind of energy we want from our managers, you know, to help with the marketing and promotions of all of our camps. So uh, most of our team will be back next year. We're really excited. So if you guys have any questions for us at all. I have just a couple comments and then, and then maybe a question, and I know we need to move on, so I'll, I'll make it kind of quick. Sure. Um, so I'm a finance guy. I love seeing the trends, and Bob's probably said that before in one of these meetings. So I appreciate seeing the data from the prior years, and the more that, the better. The one where you don't do it is the ARC, and I find oh. the ARC table very interesting. If you just provide a total and then compare that total to the prior year. I think that's really all we need to see. All the you know nine different sessions and the numbers on the right. And the sure, months. no, that'd be, that's great feedback. Yeah. Uh, we usually do that at the end of the year, but I'll, it, from now on, I'll just Every put that in there. Every prior year, yeah. it would be nice yeah. to see the prior absolutely. Year. Dance enrollment, my eye goes to what you highlight. So mm -hmm. I appreciate the fact that we are up one you know, registrant <laughs> in dance classes. If you're doing all this other stuff for us, please don't. I, unless you guys really need all this detail on where we are with hip hop. If you're doing it for yourselves because you track this stuff, 
and you have the data anyway, great, you know, include it, it doesn't hurt. I'm just trying to save you time. You guys are doing a lot of great work for us, and if you're spending this, uh, if you're spending time doing this for us, <coughs> I just think it's information that we probably don't need. We do it actually for ourselves. Okay, great. Yeah, this so is, uh, it, it kind of goes back to cancellations. And we've been working on this for two years. We started with the bridges, Dana did it with, we kind of cut the menu down. And because of that, we, we, we grew and we had less cancellations. We're seeing it with Five Star, same thing. We met with Five Star. They're their independent contractor that offers youth athletics along with the, uh, the NERF combat. And we told them, you're offering too much. We want you to cut it down. So with dance, I needed to sit down with our dance director, Brittany, and I wanted to show her the trends. And I said, you're, you're offering hip hop three, you know, twice a year. Don't offer it twice a year, hip hop one. Offer it once, then offer hip hop two. So that, that's the reason for that. Yeah, it's for, it's for us. And then just one question real quick on kids zone. Um, unless I missed it in your presentation, it's down, the, the trend doesn't look good over the last two years, and it had been tracking at 35, 3600, and now it's down to 2600. Did they shift somewhere else? Yes, they did. So, yeah, they did. Okay. I should have mentioned that. That should have been yeah. going to put in there. Sorry. So our enrichments have grown astronomically after preschool. So most of our kids that went, all of our kids that went to Mestina's are now staying in school. And they're uh, enjoying okay. science. So we didn't cooking. lose the kids. Or just no. We something. did not, no. Okay. Great. That's how we grew in enrichments. Right. We're projecting enrichments will be uh, somewhere between ten to eighteen thousand dollars in net revenue over what we budgeted. So that's where that shift went. When that's a good shift because yeah. what they're paying for for kids zone uh, it's very little. Yeah, you want so, to so right, so kids zone is nine dollars an hour and so we 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 decided that we, if they're going to enjoy enjoy our STEM STEAM project, our classes, they're going to pay more yeah. and, and and learn a lot. And so right. they're there two more hours after school is over, which the mom loves too. And they're not yeah, in the day school. here, so yeah. so we okay. have shifted and it's gone up. Yeah. Right. Any Thanks. any other questions? I want to ask you a question. Sure. Did you know that the high school? I just learned this. High school offers life learning certification now during the school year, mm -hmm. during the day? Yes, because uh, Andy Colton, our uh, manager, he helps with that certification process with the high school. Yeah, I think that is so great. So for $55, a kid can get certified and become a lifeguard. Now we've been working with them to get those, because that's- That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Like you have like three classes, you have like over 30 kids a semester that are lifeguards and ready to go come May. Mm -hmm. And when I was thinking, like, what a great way just to go through the high school and say, can you give us a list of everybody that received their certification? We already have that. A Andy works there, and he oh, okay. he's in charge of uh, lifeguard certification, and uh, he he and I are strategizing, and we'll be talking later about you know we have to meet the market. You know that's that's the other hard part with lifeguards right now. They're, right now we're paying them minimum wage. Mm -hmm. Other people are paying them eleven dollars an hour. And, and so something's got to change there, and that includes beach, you know. So uh, we struggle every year trying to recruit the lifeguards, not because um, they don't want to come here. They, it's, it's, the, it's the dollar amount. And if they're getting offered that much more somewhere else, we got we to attract those candidates, and that'll give us good, really good lifeguards. Not that we don't have good ones, but we, we want some experience underneath their belt, you know. Great. Thanks, guys. Great. Great. Thanks, guys. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Nice work. So, well, that's really just more just kind of an update informational. Yes, uh, it's what we try to do. Is right. Okay. Well, we'll move on to new business. Um, the paddle club lights and. Hours of operation. So I'll say uh, much ado. I think primarily what to ask from, from staff is and what we talked about with the facility and programs committee is that we are looking to get one night a week uh, where we are currently at 10.15 for league play and moving the lights off time to 10.30. Uh, this year it would be on Wednesday evenings. That's when our better 
players play, hence they play longer points. Their matches were the ones that, for the most part, were the ones that were being interrupted uh, in years past with the cutoff of the lights at 10 15. Um, so that is the petition that we are requesting and that we, uh, we got consensus from the Facility and Programs Committee uh, to approve. The only thing that I would say is when I read the packet and the recommendation, I read it as one day in the whole year. One day the, of the week. It didn't say, like. So it should be more specific. Uh, just be clear, because I the way it read, it felt like it was one day throughout the season versus one day a week. So that was just kind of missing. One league and I, per week, per it season. Say per no, week. I know, but I'm yeah, saying that should be added. Per, Right, let's just yeah. add the per week. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> that was the only thing it didn't come across. Correct. So my question is, if the, if the top players play Wednesday night this week, Eric, are they going to play Wednesday night next year in 2020, in 2019? So we, so that's... That's why we're writing into the petition. Why we'd like to write into the petition that we have the choice to determine what that one night is. Yeah. It doesn't say Wednesday. It just says one, just one day, night. Per, one night per week. That makes sense. meeting with the residents uh, on this? So Gail, Gail came to the committee meeting. She was part of the discussion, um, and she reacted pretty favorably to the compromise that we came up with of just having um, the late night is one night per week. So um, while she doesn't get a vote necessarily, she was definitely supportive of um, the compromise, and, and that's what you see before you in the recommendation. We're going to continue to meet with the neighbors. We want she invited us yeah. to from her top of the bedroom area from the top floor is to look down. She still wants us to do that. So, so I think those are the little things. We just once we try this to be able to go over there and take a look to see what it's worth. Just clarification: This is a we're making. A, Addendum to the zoning renewal, I guess, of the special use. Yes, there's an ordinance this is with the is. village that outlines it. So there will be a village process uh, if the board approves the the recommendation. Uh, there will be a process. I would anticipate that process with the timing. Uh, it's probably going to be about a two month process from from now before we get formal approval from the from the village, and that's it. Thanks go smoothly but we will communicate with the residents as Ron said um, about this recommendation uh, and moving it forward and continue we've, we've already had fairly open communication with several residents about this topic okay well it sounds like you worked a nice compromise I mean that's I think so. what it, mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. trying to balance as best we can so okay any other comments or just Eric, I, are you guys going to work with the captains to try to get matches to start at seven? Absolutely. Okay. Because men are notorious for not starting at seven; they're showing at seven. So um, you might encourage your captains to say, "Just try to get the prior now." Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a great group of guys. Okay, great. I know Because that might help too. If we get some of them done early once in a while, that might help too. Great. Thanks. So, we need a motion here for this? Yeah, there we go. So, do we have a, a motion to, uh, approve, to approve the request uh, to the village to permit the paddle club lights to remain on until 10.30 on one league night per, per, week. per, per week. week. Per week. Per week. Per season. Per season. <laughs> per season. From October 1 through March 31st. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Earhart? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Mossbarger? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. President Douglas? Yes. Okay, now I move on to written communications, community comments, and correspondences. Um, it's pretty well self-explanatory here. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, would someone like to take us into executive session? Brian. We can't go in. We don't have Brian, yeah, we don't have Brian here. <laughs> Corey? I, I can't. I don't have a good one. I'll move sure. to that we go into executive <laughs> session for a the discussion of the meetings lawfully closed under the Open Meetings Act, whether for purposes of approval by the district of the minutes or semi annual review of the minutes, pursuant to section 2.06 for 5 by LCS. 120-2C21 of the Open Meetings Act, B, the setting of a price for sale or lease of property owned by the public body pursuant to section 2.06 per 5 IL CS 120-2C6 of the Open Meetings Act, C, appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of an employee pursuant to section 2 0.06 per 5 ILCS 120-2C1 of the Open Meetings Act, and D, litigation when an action against, affecting, or or on behalf of the particular public body has been filed and is pending before a court or administrative tribunal or when the public body finds that an action is probable or imminent, in which case the basis for the finding shall be reported and entered into the minutes of a closed meeting. Pursuant to section 2.06 per 5 ILCS 120-2C11 of the Open Meetings Act. Second. Roll call. Yeah. Yeah. Roll call. Commissioner Ehrhardt? Yes. Commissioner McHenry? Yes. Commissioner Mossberger? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. President Douglas? Yes. Thanks, guys. Okay, now that we're coming out of the executive session, um, no action right. being taken, so may I have uh, a motion to adjourn? So moved. All Second. Okay, thank you. And then all in favor? Aye. 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 Hearing no nays, we're all done. Thank you.